Let's start by looking at the design that I'm going to be playing with in this video. So, uh, what makes it good? Well, let's take a look at some of these elements. So, obviously we've got a rectangular card, and so that would be, in this case, it looks like a tenfold. But what's intriguing is, first off, we've got mats on the focal and on the back panel. We've got a pattern paper on the back panel that complements the focal. But notice that this rectangle is a little more narrow than this one, so it's not just a series of nested rectangles, and that's cool. The other thing is I'm noticing that the sentiment is actually part of the focal, and that's neat. And then lastly, we've got a bow that just adds a little bit of interest. So I've already got these materials prepared and cut, and so we're going to, again, mat a back panel. We've got our focal that's going to be matted, and I've got the kind of coordinating complementary uh, bow that's going to go into the corner. So like before, I'm just going to take photos as I layer this up, and we're going to take a look at the good piece. Now that I'm back with the finished piece, let's talk about some specifics. So this is a 5 by 7 card. It came in an eighth of an inch for the mat. So I do have a white border, and then I came in another eighth inch for this pattern panel. And then the topper is about 5 and 3 eighths by 3 inch, but that was more or less uh, based upon what was going here. And so I talked about, you know, balance, and you can't muck it up. And so this bow is a dimensional kind of piece together die cut bow. But let's talk about this, because anywhere along the bottom, this would be comfortable. I probably wouldn't put it here unless I changed the color, only because I've got that brown color here. But I would never put it on top, because your weight of your card, whether it's an embellishment or the design or the papers or the colors, really needs to be at the bottom of your greeting. The other thing, I would use a die cut, so I would absolutely, I still got thing placed here. I would do it in, if I were to move it over here, I would probably introduce this color because most of this color is over here. And then I would use a ribbon, so an actual ribbon. And um, the only thing is you don't want to introduce another finish, not unless you want to change some of these other elements. So let me take photos of this finished piece and let's go ahead and take a look at the inside. So I just used a different pattern paper, but complimentary, and added some gifts, because we have gifts here. Actually, I have just about everything here. So I don't think you could have gone wrong with anything on the inside. And then I did do an envelope. I don't have it handy, but you'll see it in the photograph. So that is our good design, and now we're going to move on to doing something better. So now we're ready to move on to making this better. And the way I like to make things better is by adding interest. So what I want to do is introduce the shape. And I'm going to introduce it in between the focal and the back panel. And so I've already got these pieces cut out. And I want to talk about shapes a little bit. Um, actually, I want to finish this piece. But first off, uh, there are twin shapes. So if I made like a chunkier rectangle, that would be like a twin to this narrow rectangle, and then this more average rectangle. Anything with a straight edge would be like a sister and brother. So I could go with squares, I could go with uh, diamonds, hexagons, anything else. And then coordinating would be something else that I've got in these images. So I could, I could go with circles. But I've chosen squares, so I'm going to put them on point. We're going to talk about the colors after I finish the piece, but let me go ahead and put this layer of interest, and then we'll talk about it. So I think I have a mission accomplished in this adding more interest piece. And so it's, it's really subtle, but it is interesting, and I just want to talk about color a little bit because I situated these colors, and first off, they're really close to what's in my focal. And so I put the yellow one over here because I've got the majority of yellow here. I put the brown over here because the sleigh is over here. And then, of course, I'm left with that pink dot. I kept them all the same pattern. And then for my bow, I used the same pattern papers, but making sure I use these two colors on top of the brown. And like I said, uh, still a very cheerful because I use the polka dots. 
And because they're the same, your eye's not all that confused. I mean, it's getting close. So, uh, the other thing about the position of the bow, you know what, I'm going to leave it here for this and also the last piece, only because I kind of want to draw attention to the sentiment. And so I want to talk about inspiration for a little bit. And so this all came from a topper set, actually. So this is supposed to be a decoupage topper. And I saw these images back here. Well, first off, I didn't want to fussy cut uh, geometric shapes. They're very unforgiving. I would rather do a wine glass or something like that than try and get these corners exactly right and these edges exactly straight. So that was the first thing. And then the other thing, you know, I don't have to use these patterns. I can pick and choose, and you're going to see that here and also when we start playing. Okay, now for the best, what I want to do is add some embellishing. And so I just want to introduce this really quick because I want to exaggerate that focal proportion. So I'm going to make it narrower and longer. And so that's going to sit closer to this. I can get those materials ready. And then for my embellishments, I'm just going to use little squares. So I've got these little, I'm going to introduce black. I might have to introduce some solid color, but I don't want to introduce any more patterns into this piece. And then the inside, you know, I apologize for that first one because when I make this good, better, best, I like to make it so that anyone can create it with some pattern paper and scissors or a slicer. So I didn't mean to introduce uh, die cuts into that, at least not yet. So let me take photographs of this finished piece. And I do have the envelope, so I made another coordinating envelope. And I'll get that, and then what the materials are for the next piece, and then we'll talk about the finished best piece. And here's how that last uh, piece turned out. And there's a progression to doing embellishments like this. Well, first off, I mean, I start off over in here, and... I don't know if you can see it, but there, I've still got three groups of clusters. And I started off with the little black pieces, and I knew where my bow was going to go. And then I added some color. But what happens when you've got a busy design, and you add a little more busy, it looks kind of awkwardly busy. And so from there, I just kind of extended, added this clump, added this clump. See that these are raised up. And then I always like to have a little renegade. And that actually balances the card. On the inside, uh, change things up a little bit because I did have a piece of the envelope that was left over and just added more of these little squares. And so that's how this turned out. Really pretty. Of course, I'm going to do a coordinating envelope. Okay, so at this point, what I want to do, well, first off, leave photos of this and then the trio together, so the good, better, best. And now it's time to play. So we're going to take this design out for a spin, and I'll be back. In this first play piece, I've done another 5 by 7 And, yeah, the mood's entirely different. But the reason I showed that last photo is because this is pretty typical. It's like a frame inside of a frame. And, like I said, boring. So, even if I just have this narrow rectangle inside this mat. The other reason um, I've done this piece is because this pattern has nothing to do with this focal. So this is a watercolor focal. I just found a pattern paper that um, coordinates exactly in color. So, what I'm saying, I don't know what's in your stash, but I've had a pattern paper like this. Actually, I turn it the right way. And an image like this. I will put these two together in this card design because it works. The other thing I've done, I still have the three squares. But I dipped this one down a little bit lower because I knew my ribbon was going to come here. I usually don't mix mix finishes, but if I do, I'm going to make sure that they're odd. So I've got five down here scattered across the bottom. Then I've got the two up here. And then I've got my little squares again. Kind of adding a little emphasis on that sentiment. So let's look at the inside because what I'm going to do on the inside is just kind of repetition and what's left over. This was actually a five and three quarter by almost four and a quarter topper. 
which you saw almost complete in this one. So I narrowed that down so I had a strip left over. That's going on the inside. And then I just kind of want to repeat the squares. And then because I have a ribbon here, that ribbon fits. I'm going to do an envelope. And I've done that because I've got, this is a 12 by 12 paper. i got plenty of that so it can coordinate. But just see the difference between this piece and that piece. Now that you know it's the same design, you can see that, but they look entirely different. So anyway, I'm going to leave photos of this finished piece and we'll move on to the next one. What I want to play with is I, I've got three on one and I want to do three on the, on the focal and one in the back. So let's see how that turns out. But when you see the pieces that I cut out for that next project, uh, keep your eyes open for that. Here's how play piece number two turned out. And so maybe you're thinking, this is not the same design. Well, it is. When you think about the portions that I care about, they came from this first piece. So I've got the sketch here, and I've got my large rectangle. I've got a different proportion in my focal rectangle, and I added a shape, in this case, an oval. And then as far as additionals, you know, I've got the bow. I put it in between this split section and then I've got my embellishments which in this case are sequins and nouveau drops so that is exactly this piece with my addition of the better and my addition of the best and so that's the way this worked out and so what I want you to see is that when you see a design pick out what you like use it and then make it your own I love to split focals, and I also love sequins. Actually, I get the EBGBs if I don't use sequins in my designs very much. And on the inside, I just did another strip of the same pattern of paper, added another sentiment, and here I added stickers. I want to talk about the inside a little bit of these tenfolds because, first off, um, a wide tenfold, especially this is seven and a half by five, by the way, so I increased the length a little bit. But if your tenfolds do not stand up, flat and they tend to flop like this, you're not using a heavy enough cardstock. What will help that, and the reason I do put a lot of strips on the bottom of these, is that that will add stability when it's displayed. Of course, that's assuming that someone who receives it will display it, but maybe that's a good assumption. Okay, I have got the envelope for this, and I will move into my next piece. So we are going to take this design and we're going to turn it into a book fold. And I'm going to use a friend from the last video. So I've got a little book page. And we're going to do something with this. So let me get that set up ready. And then I'll be back with the finished piece. In this play piece, what I've done is I've taken our card design and turned it on its side. So... I've got a rectangle. I changed the card size to 7.5 by 4.5. So just you can mess with all that. But the other thing, so I've got the rectangle in the rectangle and I've got the bow, which are the basic elements or the good elements. And then I introduced circles, which I talked about shapes. So circles are a distant cousin and your thought process isn't always linear because I knew I wanted to add eyelids. This is a masculine card, and hardware is always good for embellishments. And then some horseshoes. So those are circular. It makes these circles comfortable. And then the other thing I did when adding dimension, instead of just piling on my circles, I cut into this pattern paper with a circle die cut here and here because I've got this dark brown mat and just added another circle which is just a little bit larger to introduce some color and also matted in color. And like I said, the embellishments are three eyelets and three horseshoes and that's how this turned out. And on the inside I just have another strip of that pattern paper and then two colors I introduced on the outside and then I'm going to do a craft envelope with this one. So that's how this turned out. Okay, I want to talk about uh, my final two pieces together, and so I'll leave the setups for that as long as, as well as the finished uh, photos of this one, and I'll be back.
For the last two pieces, I'm going to change the size first off. So this is a six and a half by five. And then I've got pretty much the same uh, focal size that I did. And if you go back to the play photo, uh, what this is is a single piece of cardstock. And what you've got when you've got a good design is you can start throwing in things like these doilies that have shape already. I don't have to cut a shape. I can add a shape. Of course, when I'm adding a doily, this is coated cardstock. This comes from Hunky Dory. So it's a single piece of adorable squirrel. I picked out the scene that I liked, and then I decided to pop in some red. And so I kept it pretty much central. And since I have the paper doily, I've got several different finishes on my gold. I decided to throw in some acetate die cut uh, snowflakes. And so these are gold foiled, and they just kind of add the finishing touches, which we always do for better. Of course, I've got another piece of that pattern, and actually, I had a piece left over that was up here somewhere where I created the tag. So I'm going to leave photos of that. And then the last piece, I want to do a note card, because note cards are a little bit different. And so I've got all the design elements that I did with the first card. I just got fewer of them. So I've got a single shape behind my narrow rectangle, which is in a different proportion than this piece. And this comes from a single piece of 12 by 12 pattern paper. And I just chose an interesting strip uh, out of the design to use as my focal. And then I've got a single pearl, a single bow, and that finishes this up. And on the inside of the note card, I didn't do anything. And on both these envelopes, I just did an interior like so. Anyway, I will leave finished photos of these. And then that is it for this video. So I hope you took something away with you that you can use in your own paper crafting. And then I've got the promo for the next good, better, best design.